time now. He's also teaching at uh, classes at Majid Ansar on Saturdays. He has the regular classes of uh, Majid on the van with Thursday. Uh, so sure. if you're in the area, uh, you can please go stop by the Majid, the massages, and benefit from him, inshallah. Thank <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله وصفيه ومينه على وحيه ومصطفاه من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه ورحمته وبركاته عليه أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, esteemed elders, friends, colleagues, teachers and students, and all honored guests, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in his glorious book, after seeking refuge in him, the sublime and the exalted, from the accursed devil, Al-Yawma Akmalutu Lakum Deenakum. Allah says, on this day, I have completed and perfected for you your way of life, your faith, your religion, your legislature, everything that you do as my servants. Allah the Sublime and the Exalted, He sent down this verse, which is can, or can be found in the fifth chapter of the Quran al Kareem, Surah Al Ma'idah, only a few months before the death of the Messenger of Allah. So, therefore, this verse in the Quran al Kareem was from the last pieces of revelation. Briefly before that verse in Surah Al Baqarah, which was from the very last pieces of revelation, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, What yawman turja'una fi Allah. Fear a day, prepare for a day in which you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tells us, Al Yawma, on this day, Akmaltu lakum dinakum, I have completed for you your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, and I have made my ni'mah, my blessing upon you total. And I have chosen and I have become pleased with Islam as your way of life. So let us just stop and let us just reflect on what this verse means. Why was it sent down? What does it necessitate and require from us? What does Allah want from us behind this verse? Allah tells us, al yawma in other words, there isn't a day that can come after the blessed lifetime of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, in which any religious practice can be introduced. Impossible. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us, I will complete my religion for you. I will send messengers. I will send prophets. I will send righteous men among you that will complete for you your religion. But Allah says, al yawma today. That's firstly. Allah the Exalted didn't say, I have made your religion complete and perfect. One may ask the question, if Allah made the religion complete and perfect, then why does the rest of the verse emphasize two more things? And I've completed my favor upon you. What favor can, what favor can be greater than that of Islam? What completion or perfection can be more after than the first part? Allah Azza wa Jalla, He then says a third time, وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And I am pleased with Islam as your way of life. So would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with anything that isn't perfect? Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose and select and legislate anything that was other than perfect and complete? The wisdom behind us, brothers and sisters, 
is first and foremost is to place emphasis on the tremendous bounty of Islam. Secondly, not to leave no misconceptions, any ambiguities with regards to the reality that Islam is complete. And when we say complete, we mean every single aspect of the religion, whether it's our creed, what we believe in, what we profess as Muslims, whether it's our practices of worship, whether it is how we live on a daily basis, social, economical, political issues of Islam, every facet of the deen is complete. So therefore the Muslim is a person that when he eats, when she drinks, when you have a child, if Allah tests you and afflicts you with the death of your child, marriage, divorce, life and death, everything that you do in this worldly life, it is symbolic. And it is a means of a ritual. It is a means of spirituality. So therefore coming together, having what we call in Al-Islam Al-Aqiqah, as some of the ulama call it and others may call it other than that, when which you slaughter an animal pertaining to whether it's a boy or a girl, one animal or two animals, offering the meat, feeding the people, is not just to eat and drink and be happy. It's not just to come together and to unite and laugh and joke. But it's more than that. Rather, it is putting into practice that verse from the Quran al Kareem. On this day, I have made your religion complete. On this day, I've made my favor upon you complete. On this day, I've chosen what is complete and perfect as your way of life and everything that you do. So therefore, the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he told us in the hadith of Samar ibn Jundub عنه, that's been collected by Imam Tirmidhi and others, Kullu mawludin murtahanun bi'aqiqatihi He says, every single child is held at ransom. Every single child, boy or girl, is held in ransom. And the only way to free and to emancipate that child and to get him out of that bondage, that ransom, is with his or her aqiqa, making that sacrificial slaughter. The Prophet ﷺ, he then tells us, يُذْبَحُ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ سَابِعِهِ وَيُحْلَقُ وَيُسَمَّى He says, on the seventh day after his birth, the boy or the girl should be, or the aqiqa should be made for it. Han Najm, not a year or seven months later. طيب, seven days later. He says, the head should be shaved and the baby should be given a name. Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated in another hadith, عَنِ الْغُلَامِ شَاتَيْنِ مُتَكَافِئَتَانِ وَعَنِ الْجَارِيَةِ شَاتٌ وَفِي لَفْظٍ أَمْرُنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم Aisha, she says that a young boy should have two sheep slaughtered for it and a young girl should have one sheep slaughtered for her. In other words, the aqiqa is not a means of torturing or punishing an animal. The aqiqa is not a means of eating and drinking and that's it. But the aqiqa is a means of spirituality. It's sacrifice. It is symbolic for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu he tells us about the Eid and especially the Eid after the Hajj or which we know as Eid al-Adha and as a direct relation to the aqiqa because it involves slaughtering. The Prophet he tells us in Bukhari and Muslim أَيَّامُ تَشْرِيق أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ وَشُرْبٍ وَذِكْرٍ لِلَّهِ He said the days of the Eid, the three days after the Eid are days for the following things. Listen very carefully. He says أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ Days for eating وَشُرْبٍ Drinking وَذِكْرٍ لِلَّهِ And to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, brothers and sisters, this manifests the perfection and the complete nature of our deen. You eat, you drink, you invite your friends, your family members, but most importantly, in the beginning and in the end, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dhikr. So from the greatest benefits of the aqiqah, slaughtering an animal for your child, three points, in the nice subhanahu wa ta'ala. First and foremost, is the thanking of Allah, the sublime and the exalted. In other words, you take that poor animal's life, you spill its blood, what did the sheep do? It didn't do anything, it has no crime. Why are you taking his life? You sacrifice it for a greater cause and for a greater purpose. And that is to manifest your thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if it wasn't for Allah, you would have no child. If it wasn't for Allah, your child would not be healthy. And if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only Allah knows what would take place after childbirth. 
So that's the first wisdom of the aqiqah. The second wisdom of the aqiqah, the ulama they say, is to show and to explain to the people that this child is from fulan and fulana. He is the son of this man and the son of this woman. It's known, it's widespread among the people for that child to be respected, honored, and treated properly and we say what? Appropriately. The third wisdom of the aqiqah is that which Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala explained. He said perhaps when a man slaughters for his child, his boy or his girl, it will be a means of protection from shaitan. It will be a, a means of safeguarding this child from the whispers, from the incitements of the accursed devil. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said this isn't far-fetched. Because when the child was conceived, when a man went to his wife, when they had their intimate relationship, he mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. As the Prophet sallallahu said, that whenever a man is intimate with his wife, and he says, Oh Allah, jannibna shaytana, protect us from the devil, keep us safe from the devil, and protect us from that which you give us as rizq, sustenance. So Ibn Qayyim, he says, just as Allah's name was mentioned at the time of conceiving the child, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is mentioned and his praise is proclaimed and sacrifices made for him when the child is born and comes into the existence of the worldly life. Ibn Qayyim, he then says, in most cases, when a child does not have a proper aqiqah, he says in most cases, you find that the shaitan, he plays around with the child. And then he says, he says in Allah's wisdoms and his divine secrets behind what he legislates is far greater than that. It's what is known to us as human beings, our small, minute minds. So if you stop and you think, just look at this magnificent wisdom, thanking Allah, declaring the rights of your child, and protecting him or her from the shaitan. Shaving the child's head is another means of sacrifice. It's another means of offering. It's another means of you doing something, getting rid of something that's beloved to you for a greater cause and for a greater purpose. The Prophet he says, Wa yusamma, and the child should be named. And this is from the greatest rights of the child. Many parents today, unfortunately, they think that the rights of the children only take place and only come into effect after the child is born and when the child grows up and when the child goes to school. You feed them, you clothe them, you give them shelter, you educate them. We say, the rights of the child begin before you even get married and the spouse that you choose. Sister, the husband that you look for, the husband that you pick, that is the first time in which you're looking out for the rights of your child. The Prophet he tells us, He says, when the son of Adam, when man dies, the rewards of all of his good deeds, they stop, except for three good deeds. And he mentioned from them, He says, or a righteous child that will pray for him. That will supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah have mercy upon my father for raising me as a Muslim, for teaching me, for doing what he's supposed to do. And how can you have a righteous child unless that child has a righteous mother? How can the child be righteous unless the father is righteous? So the first right of the child is the selection of a beautiful, righteous spouse. The second right of the child is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to enjoy what he has made permissible for you from your husband, from your wife, is that you mention Allah's name and you seek refuge from the accursed devil. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the glorious Quran? Speaking about Maryam alayhi salam and Zakariyah and Yahya and many of the prophets and messengers. He said, he says, indeed, I have called this child Maryam. I've given her a name of Mary. And I ask you, O Allah, to protect her and to protect her progeny from the accursed devil. So we see the Quran and the Sunnah go hand in hand. Picking a good name, picking a good spouse, mission Allah's name, seeking refuge in Allah from the accursed devil. Then another right of the child is giving the child a beautiful Islamic name. There is no restriction on what name you can name your daughter or your son, as long as it isn't something that is prohibited. Whether it's a foul name, a name from Jahiliyyah, a name that has a foul meaning, something that is impermissible, something that is of Tezkiyah, that Allah's Messenger has not legislated. Name your son Ahmed, Muhammad, Abdullah, 
Abdul Rahman, whatever you wish to name your child. But the best names is Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. As for the hadith that says, Khairul al Asma, or Ahabul Asma Allahi, Mahumida wa Ubida, the most beautiful names, the most virtuous names, the best names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those that begin with Muhammad and Abdullah. That hadith is not authentic. And the Prophet did not say those words. However, some of the people of knowledge they say from the best names for the child to have is one of the names of Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. Muhammad, Ahmed, Humayyid, Hamad, Mustafa, so on and so forth. Abdullah, Abdurrahman, names of the prophets, Ayyub, Ismail, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, etc. So the point is, we congratulate our brother Najm and his wife. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase them both in Iman, increase them both in righteousness and guidance and forthrightness, I mean. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect Hudayfa and to keep him on the Sirat al Mustaqim and to make him from the great Muslims who leave a strong impact upon this nation and upon the non Muslims as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you well for coming out and accepting the invitation of your brother despite your schedule, despite you being busy, you have to work at night, Abu Hamza, and Allah knows best what else you have to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you for implementing and for reviving the Sunnah. As Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala said, that when a man has a child, he should do the aqiqah even if he has to take a debt. He says, even if he has to borrow money to slaughter an animal. Why? Imam Ahmed, he said, فَقَدْ ahya sunnah." He says he has revived a forgotten and abandoned sunnah. And he is also, when you come to a walima or an aqiqah, you're also reviving the sunnah. Najm, I didn't just come here just for you. Even though I would have come just for you, alhamdulillah. You're my brother and my friend for many years. And inshallah, the rest of the brothers and sisters, hopefully you didn't come just for Najm. However, perhaps you came implementing what the Prophet wasallam said. When you are invited, then you should go. When you're invited to a dinner, to a meal, to a feast, to a festival, then you should go. Whenever you're called to a feast, then you should respond. Unless there's something haram, which you do not have the ability to change or to advise or to speak out against. So therefore, look at the beauty of Islam, brothers and sisters. We have friendship and we have sunnah. We have religion, spirituality, and we also have worldly bonds. So the believer, be it subhanahu wa ta'ala, male and female, will get a double reward. You get a reward for implementing the sunnah, reviving the sunnah, and you also get a reward for being a good brother or sister to your brother and sister in Al Islam, Abu Hudayfa and Um Hudayfa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them both. I ask Allah Azza wa by His beautiful names and perfect attributes to guide us, to keep us all safe, and allow us to have many beautiful, righteous Muslim children. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you all for your patience and your attentiveness. So Jazakumullah Khairan. May Allah bless uh, 